Next up, traditional market stuff. UK Digital Bank Ziglu launches peer-to-peer -peer payments for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. So London-based bank Ziglu, I think I said it right, said it has been licensed on an electronic money institution or EMI by the UK's Financial Conduct Authority. After receiving the permit, the fintech startup immediately launched peer-to-peer -peer payments for both crypto and fiat. The digital bank supports the British Pound and Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. I was looking, I was like, why is Litecoin supported? What is so great about Litecoin? And maybe I'm missing the boat on Litecoin. Tell me if I'm wrong, because like Ethereum, the transaction fees are like outrageous. Uh, Bitcoin, when it all went up, same type of thing. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is there. I mean, you know, I had Roger on yesterday. He talks about how great it is. I, I don't know. And then Litecoin, maybe it's just because it's just so easy to use. The transaction fees aren't there. You can use some type of privacy. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing the boat on this. I, I, don't, I used to own Litecoin, I sold it before, but uh, here we are. Anyhow, this means users of the Ziglu app can now make payments peer-to-peer -peer over the network or to other banks within the UK using the supported coin. So if you want to have something that is like fast and easy and has low transaction fees, maybe Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash are one of those things you could actually use. This was launched in June. Ziglu raised $5 million in seed funding. Let me say that again. This was launched in June. What are we in, September? Three months. Three months, and this is where they're at. The company says total digital assets are insured against cyber attacks up to the value of 50,000 pounds or $66,000 with commission fees of 1.25% on all trade activities. So that's pretty cool. Just like we have in the States, the FDIC insurance is up to $250,000 and the banks. For here, for your digital assets, you're you know, insured up to 50,000 pounds. That's fantastic. That's how it should be done. The commission fees, 1.25%, eh, what are you going to do? I mean, there's, there's a lot of different places where you can get it cheaper. But uh, if you want to take a look at that, I have an exchange fees and wallet information spreadsheet. It goes everything from, I mean, Coinbase I used to use a lot. I don't use it anymore. I have a, I have a one two punch of uh, Celsius and Voyager, but I also uh, do a lot of things with Kraken and Gemini. And I go over all the different wallets that are out there, such as uh, like Uphold and the Aber app. And I go over the Simple Swap, Uniswap, Kraken, and just, you know, what I've gone through with them. And if I recommend or not, rec I do not recommend Etor. Just letting you guys know right now. And then uh, it just goes over the interest rates if you're going to. Uh, deposit uh you know celsius has some great interest rates so is, so does voyager and all different fees that they have so go ahead and check that out uh, also on top if you want to sign up there's affiliate links you don't have to use them you can go right to voyager you can go right to gemini and just sign up but if you use the links it gives you between 10 and 25 bucks so your choice anyhow if you want to find that it's in the description of every one of my videos it looks just like this so go ahead and check that out at your leisure all right let's break back in that story okay moving down to finish this up the Ziglu app user numbers currently range in the low thousands, but the CEO says I'm aiming for a hundred million customers over the next six or seven years. And I gotta tell you, I, I gotta tell you, I think that uh, he is right on track. I mean, if you got a bank that gives you the option, which they all should do, of fiat currency and also cryptocurrency, that's what the world's gonna run on. So why wouldn't you do that? Here's a prime example. I was trying to pay my niece from my bank with Venmo. And my bank, for some reason, stopped the transaction. They just refused it. And Venmo froze my account for 72 hours. Well, my niece had to get paid. So what do I do? Go to exchange, pick up some XRP, and I send it over, and it's there like that. And then she can do whatever she wants with it. So in these situations, like this is fantastic. We can use fiat money. We can use cryptocurrency. It's at our disposal and whatever we want to use. And that's just the, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So if you don't remember, back in July, uh, the office of the OCC with Brian Brooks, uh, he's the head of that department, who was also the head of the, of the legal department for Coinbase, uh, they gave the option or the ability for banks to custody cryptocurrency. This is actually a great article written by Alex Mascioli, and he pretty much just said, look, the banks, they are going to have this option, and they're not going to do it because they are not at the forefront of innovation because banks suck. Basically, that's what it came down to. I mean, the banks suck. That was my word. But look, I mean, if you've got something like this going on and the banks are like, hold on, wait, there's this other bank and they're doing all the fiat that we do, but they're also doing cryptocurrencies, which is what we could actually do as far as custody go. And then people are flocking over there. Well, the free market's gonna gonna state, hey, like me and you will probably go to those types of banks. And as time moves on, people will go more to those banks. And I believe that banks will look across the ponds or just across the street and go, you know what? 
they're doing something we're not doing. We should probably do that. And the reason why they're going to actually catch up to themselves is because no one wants to be blockbuster. Nobody wants to be that old technology that's sitting at the end of the street that everybody is passing by in the ghost town as they all go to Netflix. Just my theory. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. You know what? This is taking way longer than I thought. The last two articles where we talk about the track record about Bitcoin going to 120,000 from Dave the Wave and also the article about Binance joins the DeFi craze. I'm going to do in a separate video and I'm going to do it as a live premiere so we can all talk about it, especially this one. This one, again, I feel guilty for even talking about it, but uh, it has to be talked about. So uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump into Q of the day and then we'll finish up.